tender and juicy and most of the time she did slide hers in the oven um, but today we're going to make it on top of the stove in a brazier but if you've got a crock pot or a dutch oven you could use those as well but it needs to be something that's closed up and it's going to cook slow for a couple of hours we are chopping up a little bit of bell pepper and I thought I'd throw some of this bell pepper in it. We're getting it out of the garden and it needs to be used. So we grew this bell pepper. All right, I wanted some little ones for flavor and I'm also gonna put in some larger pieces. And now we're going to chop up this onion. Some nice pretty round steak these are nice and about close to a half inch thick so what you're going to do is place a couple of steaks out on your board and you're going to do them all this way you're going to salt and pepper them flour them and beat them so I'm salting and then I'm on pepper okay for the beef Chris has already beat two of them, so the counter's kind of messy because it's a lot of work um, on my arm. So I was just going to do one for you guys. So you're going to take your steak and put it on your cutting board. And we're going to salt and pepper it good. And then after I salt and pepper it, I'm going to trim the fat off the edges. If you don't, it's really hard for the uh, beef to, to actually get tenderized because it wants to hold its shape around where the fat is. So I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper this side. And then I'm gonna trim it, put a little flour on it, and we're gonna start beating it. This is pretty tough, I can tell you right now, because this is a good knife. It's a pretty tough piece of meat. But that's what you get with a round steak, okay? And you're going to just lightly dredge it with flour. Or just, you can either lightly dredge it or just let it lay in some flour lightly. Then you're going to beat it with the mallet. Okay. This is our mallet. And I'm just going to beat the hound out of it. And I'm not going to show you the whole process because it takes a few minutes. So you can just watch for a minute. <laughs> and some of you, your mom might have let you do this part and it was fun to you as kids. But remember that... Um, when you do this, you really should have your meat at room temperature so that when you start beating it with the mallet, it doesn't take all day to get it tenderized. So what you want is for it to lose its shape and start falling down and breaking down. And you can tell the difference in how it looks now compared to what it looked before I started. Now we're going to put our meat right here on this. Should I half it 
and make them smaller pieces. That's up to you. Whatever you I think. I think I will. And I'm gonna cut these in half, y'all. Now, if you're in an area where you can get tenderized steak at the uh, store, at your butcher or in the store that you shop at, then especially if you're, you know, have a hard time or you've got an arm like I do that has lymphedema or something like that, you are way better off getting a tenderized, uh, you know, steak. Cube steak is what we call it here. If you can't, then this is the old-fashioned way of doing it. And some people can't get cube steak, so I thought we'd do it this way today. Because this is a original like everybody used to have to do it. Even here, where we live in the United States. Right now, we're just putting a good bit of flour on it so that when we brown it in the skillet, it'll have some uh, flour on it. And then later, that will make a nice rendered gravy. We're going to cook this a couple of hours. I'm just going to use a little corn oil. Now this is a brazier. It's got a lid that seals this meat when it starts to cook. If you've got, you don't have to have a brazier. You can use a Dutch oven. You could actually use the crock pot or you can just use a baking dish and put it, foil over it really tight. Just something that's gonna keep that moisture in is what your goal is. Mama always cooked hers in the stove just in a baking dish with some foil over it. But she didn't have a brazier like this. We're gonna use our brazier today. So you're just gonna wanna brown this really good. And then we're gonna take it out once it's brown. And saute our onion and bell pepper that we cut up. These are the ingredients we're going to be using. I got some beef stock. I've got some roasted garlic powder, some onion powder, paprika, Worcestershire salt, Worcestershire, how what I call it, and some diced tomatoes. And I'm using a couple of cups of the stock, and then I'm also going to use my favorite steak seasoning. You can use any you want, but mine is. Uh, Weber steak and chalk. We're going to flip this over and let it continue to brown on both sides. We're going to take this meat out put it right here on the tray and throw our onion and pepper in here. Now I'm gonna slice up some garlic, but I don't want it to go in here with my onion and pepper. If you let garlic get too hot, you can burn it and make it bitter, so I don't wanna do that. green peas. Now you can steam these in the bag, but we're going to put them on the stove in some stock. We're using some stock in our Swiss steak, so what I'm going to do is use some of it in these green peas, and I will let these simmer and cook on the stove top while our steak is cooking. And I'll just have them down on a really low temperature. I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, salt to it. really want to put any pepper in there. 
And I'm going to put just enough water to cover them. So it was mostly stock. And I'm going to put it back here on the stack eye and let it start simmering for supper tonight. It'll be good. I'm going to bring it to a boil and then I'll turn it all the way down and simmer it. Now we're going to put our meat back in our grazer. I'm kind of scooting the veggies over so that I get the meat on the actual bottom of the pot. Pour the juices in there with it. Now we're going to put in our spices. I'm just going to use some steak and chop, about a teaspoon. I'm just going to sprinkle paprika in it good. Onion powder, I'm going to do the same thing. I know we've got onions in here, but I just love to cook with onion powder garlic powder, Worcestershire, fresh garlic, and I just uh, sliced it up. And now the next thing is tomatoes. And some wonderful beef stock. And I'm going to add this right in the middle where my meat is not. And let it just run all the way under and over to the sides. And really you should have enough liquid in here to just cover the top of the meat. And that's about what we've got. Make sure your meat's all the way down in the bottom. And then in an hour, I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to cook it for an hour on low. Then I'm going to flip all the meat, make sure it's down in the bottom again, and cook it for another hour. I've got just a little bit of beef stock left after putting it in my peas. So why not just throw it in this uh, steak? And that way I know it's good and covered then. I mean, there's just barely any in there, probably about a quarter cup or so. So you're going to want to get a good bit of uh, liquid in there. I don't know what kind of pan you're going to have and how deep it is, but it's just according to what you're using. You could have it in the baking dish if there's just a couple of you. I mean, you can make a little Swiss steak in a, in a small square baking dish and put some foil over it. Just uh, use your judgment and just follow our directions. You don't have to use the same amount of spices because I didn't really give you an amount. Just sprinkle everything good. And we will see you when it's time to eat with some good cream potatoes, peas, and Swiss steak. Now this is one meal that makes you hungry because it cooks for so long and the house smells up. And you just get so hungry for it. So by the time it gets ready, you're going to be hungry for it. And I've tasted it and it's delicious. So what we're going to do is put us some potatoes on our plate. So you really need to have some cream potatoes. And another thing that's really pretty is peas with this. And boy, they're good too. After cooking in that broth that we put them in. Now we're gonna get us a piece of steak. Let's see which one I wanna get to go on my plate. Any, any, mighty mo. This one's a pretty shape. I'll get it. And then some people like to put the gravy, of course, on their potatoes, and you can. So I'm going to dip just a little bit of gravy out on my potatoes. Oh, 
a little extra gravy on it. Boy, that looks pretty, don't it? And delicious. All right, it should be really fork tender, so we shouldn't need a knife. We're gonna see how it turned out. Yeah, just like mama's. Nice and tender. Gotta get us a little bite of potato to go with it. Mmm. You know what? You really should buy the meat and pound it. Because it has a different texture than cube steak. It's more like steak. It is so good, y'all. Woo, this is a good supper. I hope you've enjoyed watching Colored Valley Cooks. Yummy. Where we cook. Like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.